Hi guys, so let's take a look at the causes and consequences of unemployment. Now I've broken the causes down to demand side and supply side causes. Uh, so it's important you understand the nature of these and we'll look at this uh, in a bit more detail in our next lesson. Okay, so the first point I put down on the demand side is really about uh, global demand. Okay, now in the event of a global recession, that is global GDP contracting, uh, what is likely to happen then is, is, of course, there will be a collapse in demand for a country's exports. That will lead to cyclical or demand deficient unemployment within export industries. OK, so that can pose problems. Furthermore, there is a risk of uh, financial contagion uh, and uh, fear and panic taking hold of in the markets. Now, as a direct consequence of that in 2008, it meant that uh, many of the uh, losses that were incurred on the US uh, stock markets um, also took place in uh, the London stock market. Uh, so that, that um, confidence can drop suddenly, and as a direct result of that lack of confidence and that fear, um, then it can have enormous ramifications for employment levels. After 2008, because of the UK's exposure to the US market, there was a big increase in uh, demand deficient or cyclical unemployment within the financial services industry. Okay, um, next point is about high interest rates. So if interest rates are very high, then it means consumers are actually incentivized to save money, so are businesses, uh, and they're not actually incentivized to undertake borrowing, of course, because it's very expensive to do so. Perhaps the best example from the UK's recent history is uh, going back to, what, 1992, when interest rates uh, reached as high as uh, 15% under uh, the Chancellor Norman Lamont then. Uh, and of course, the economy was in a recession at that point. Uh, then we've got the uh, point regarding negative multiplier effect. So this really just refers to uh, if there is a reduction in government spending, then it can have uh, much greater uh, impacts on the rest of the economy. The reason being that as people uh, are actually made unemployed, perhaps in certain sectors of uh, the public services, um, they can no longer actually go out and consume goods and services that they would ordinarily have consumed. And of course, that has ramifications for those businesses. Um, OK, so uh, businesses who previously would have enjoyed their, uh, their customers loyalty no longer get it. OK, so that that does have uh, another impact on employment. Then we've got the supply side areas, okay? Um, so real wages too high, so we've uh, previously discussed whether trade unions can really bargain up uh, the wage rate to command a much higher wage, uh, and that can, of course, reduce unemployment. Um, sorry, increase unemployment, of course. Uh, okay, now when it comes to uh, geographical immobility, um, then it's really about how easily can workers move from one location to another. A lot of people advocate um, removing the stamp duty on buying a house. Uh, why is that? Well, they argue that it would actually encourage uh, labour mobility and improve that geographical mobility because upon selling a house and buying another house in another location, you are not having to pay uh, a whopping great tax bill on top of that, uh, of that house purchase. Okay, next point, uh, mismatch of skills. Yeah, so we've mentioned this in relation to the structural unemployment that can take place within an economy. Workers need to ensure that they are, are actually trying to keep up with changes in the job market and this can be difficult uh, and they also need the incentive to actually do so of course. Uh, okay, But if there is a mismatch of skills then it, it can be quite damaging for a region. Just look at the South Wales uh, Valleys perhaps as an example there. Uh, after the colla collapse and closure of um, the coal mining industry there those areas still haven't really managed to recover. Um, okay, so then we've got uh, occupational immobility. How easily can actually people move from one occupation to the next? Uh, the ease at which they could do this will help actually improve the supply side of 
uh, the labour force. But if there are certain barriers to actually transferring between different jobs or roles because of training is needed or special accreditation is necessary, then that can, of course, increase unemployment. Um, finally, we've got uh, this point about technology changing. And of course, the technology changes is likely to mean, again, there will be a mismatch of skills. So once again, we can see that uh, employees need to try and keep up with whatever changes are actually taking place. Right, let's finish up with uh, our consequences here. So the number one consequence, as we've seen on our business cycle, is that of reduced GDP. Okay, output will be lower, standards of living, uh, standard of living rather, will be lower, and as a direct consequence of that, perhaps the quality of life will also be lower. Okay. Meanwhile, for the government, tax revenues will fall because fewer workers are actually employed in job roles. So that means their tax take will also decrease. For businesses, they might be less profitable. Again, meaning the actual corporation tax taken falls. Uh, meanwhile, government spending is likely to increase. These really refer to the so-called fiscal stabilizers or automatic stabilizers that we'll look at later in the course. Um, so the transfer payments that will be undertaken to uh, those people that have been made un unemployed will mean government spending will have to go up as a direct result of increased unemployment. Then we've got the inefficiency uh, that results from unemployment. We've got resources here, labourers that just aren't in active employment. They are not economically productive and that of course is inefficient. And there's an opportunity cost attached to that as well of what the next best alternative is. And that is, of course, the workers actually having some sort of meaningful work. The final point that I've put down really is about social consequences. And to uh, a large extent, these have been underestimated. Uh, OK, so when it comes to the social consequences, it could be mental illness. It could be health related problems. Uh, it could be. Uh, a, la a loss of uh, cultural identity that you've uh, actually trained for a particular role within a particular field of work. Uh, that's what you've always done in your life. You've done it for the last 20 years and suddenly that job disappears. You know nothing else. Um, so you're going to find it very difficult to actually retrain. Um, okay, so that there can be a cultural loss of identity as well to certain areas. Okay, that's it guys. Thanks a lot.